resume on the recording, make sure I get that for you, Chandler. Um, but uh, as Chandler said, my name is Peter Kelpin. I'm um, the regional director for EverFi um, based in Charlotte, North Carolina, um, and support our school district partners and State Department of Education partners across the Southeast. Um, I am really excited, one, to see so many familiar names and faces out there on the chat. Um, it's great to see folks who have used EverFi before. Um, and I saw one person who'd used it as a student and is now a teacher. Um, so I think that's just an incredible testament to uh, just the work that, that EverFi has done in South Carolina. Um, before we get rolling, I really just wanted to thank Chandler for inviting EverFi to be a part of this. Um, we love the work that um, SE Economics does in the state. And as I'll hopefully share with you all as we get started here, uh, financial literacy and understanding economics is more important now than it's ever been. Um, and I am just so proud to be able to share this information, but really just to be a part of a community of educators in the state of South Carolina that's working to, to make sure that our students across all grade levels are um, well versed in financial literacy. Um, so with that, I'm going to get us kicked off. I'm going to share our screen. Um, Chandler, I can see you. So again, if, I'm always nervous. If you just give me a thumbs up that you can see it. Awesome. Um, well, I hope that my catchy title brought a lot of y'all here today. Um, I thought about this one, uh, Checkbook. Is that an app? Um, as we all know, um, the world of financial literacy and the world of financial services has changed tremendously um, in the last you know, decade or so. And what's kind of um, really interesting to think about is when I started thinking about this presentation, you know, months ago, you know, I thought about this really in January, this is something I was going to do in the summer regardless. Um, so much about our world has changed uh, as we've all faced the realities of COVID. Um, so I'll start off here, just here's a picture of my face. I wasn't sure if everyone's going to be able to see me um, so you know what I look like. Um, and I'll just note, I know that on Zoom calls, um, I am not actually right now able to see your questions. And I know they'll get captured in that and I'll take some pause and I'll answer some questions as we go throughout. But if I don't cover your question or if you have anything in follow up, please make sure to write down my email address and phone number. I'm happy to answer any questions about EverFi coming out of this presentation. Um, so I am a former seventh grade special education teacher, so I am a creature of habit in terms of making sure that we have a good schedule and agenda, and I will try to keep us at exactly an hour, um, including getting folks uh, set up with EverFi and answer any questions. But here's just kind of our overview of the agenda today. I want to share with you some information that I've kind of just compiled as I've been thinking about this presentation and just thinking about the state of financial literacy and our economy as we really you know, dive into what next school year looks like. And then we're really going to spend a lot of time thinking about EverFi and how that might be a tool that can support your work as you go into next school year. Uh, but before we do that, I would not be a good uh, former educator without an icebreaker. Um, so you can go to this link. Um, you can actually just type in bit.ly forward slash EverFi app. And I'll keep that up. And it should take you to a Padlet, which is a tool that I just learned about. Um, so I'm going to come out of my screen share in a minute. Um, or actually, Chandler, if you can just type this in for everyone so that they can follow the link, I'll stay on my screen share. But two questions for y'all um, that we won't dive into tremendously, but that I'm curious to hear. What was the biggest challenge you faced as an educator during remote learning? And then what is the financial literacy topic that is top of mind for students, for you, going into the 2020-2021 school? And since folks can come off of mute, um, what I'll do is I'll give folks a minute to enter into Padlet. Um, and then in a minute, I'll come back and anyone who feels compelled to come off mute and share their thoughts on these two questions, we'll do about two minutes of just sharing your thoughts on these questions. Thank you, Chandler. I can see the chat now. We don't use Zoom, so I'm uh, I'm always kind of trying to navigate Zoom. But if you all take about thirty more minutes and pop into the Padlet, and I'll pull it up on my side so I can see what folks are typing in there. So. 
So I'm seeing a lot of folks, student engagement, a big challenge. And on a financial literacy side, how to budget. Calling parents, students being stressed out. Why money matters to a child who doesn't have a job. That is a great topic. Awesome. Well, I'll bring us back in. Um, uh, we'll keep the Padlet up and keep it going as we go through, as you're able to kind of get in. But we'd love to hear anyone that wants to come off mute and just share, you know, what was a big challenge that you had this school year? And then, you know, what is something that's on your mind as we think about financial literacy? Who's going to be the brave person that comes off mute? I'm good at wait time. Seventh graders. I'll go ahead. Um, my name is Denise. I worked at Alternative School for the past two years. And my biggest issue when all this happened was student engagement and valuing the classes that I taught because I'm, I taught personal finance and IT fundamentals. So a lot of parents didn't see the value in the class. So they didn't put an emphasis on students being mm -hmm. engaged in the class or doing the work. Interesting. Well, hopefully we'll ha you'll have a little bit of a talk track about the value coming out of this because I'm going to lay out some scary statistics about why, why this is so important right now. But thank you so much for sharing. Um, Anybody else? One or two? Yeah, I will. Um, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I felt so totally out of control as a teacher. We like to, we're kind of controlling things. And I felt the total lack of control over the entire process, over my students' learning. I'm special ed as well in high school, their progress over everything. It was just a loss of, of control that was, I, I was, it was tough. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I can certainly empathize. You know, I thought a lot about my students and what my life would have been like if I was in this, you know, working with a caseload of students with, you know, special education needs. Um, so. Mm -hmm. Absolutely understand. Thank you so much for sharing. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. Well, I'm going to keep rolling. Um, thanks so much for engaging with me, y'all. Um, I know as we're all navigating the virtual world too, one of the biggest challenges that I'm facing is not feeling awkward about uh, doing kind of icebreakers and big trainings like this where I can't always read the room. Um, as Chandler knows, I'm a, definitely a feed off of people's energy. So uh, it's great to, great to have folks engaged. And I appreciate y'all. Um, so let's be honest, um, we are in a different world. Um, as we know, you know, we're on Zoom right now. There's about 50 of us that, you know, typically would be together at some sort of summer session. Um, but the reality is we're not really sure when that's going to happen again. Um, the reality from an economic standpoint too, is that we're in a world that no one anticipated. If you look at March, 2020. Um, in March 2020, the national unemployment rate was 4.4%. In South Carolina, the unemployment rate was 3.2%. And there were about 700, excuse me, 76,400 folks unemployed in the state. As we all know, the next slide is not going to be a surprise. Um, but imagine telling yourself on March 1st of 2020 what the reality would be on April, for, or on April 30th of 2020. Um, with a national unemployment rate of about 14.7%, unemployment in the state of South Carolina having quadrupled to 12.8%, and almost 300, more than 300,000 South Carolinians unemployed. Um, we are, for no lack of a better term, um, in a different world. And while these two uh, slides definitely paint a picture of a scary economic condition that was unexpected, I will say we obviously are rebounding now. We're starting to see jobs um, get picked back up, but we're also rea real realizing the fact that we don't actually know when the end of COVID is in sight. Um, as many of you all might be experiencing as your districts navigate what back to school looks like, there are a lot of uncertainties. Um, and we all know that education is a great indicator of just general economic uncertainty. Um, if we don't know when we're gonna get kids back to school, how do we know when we're gonna be able to fully open our economy? 
So with that in mind, you all as stewards of financial literacy and economics need to be the folks that think about these two points. Change is inevitable. I live in Mecklenburg County. Um, Mecklenburg County had the highest unemployment rate that it had seen in over a decade. This is a headline from WBTV in June. Um, and as we just saw, we had our highest unemployment rate since the Depression era. Change is inevitable. Even if it wasn't COVID, something was going to come that was going to make our economy change, make our stability change. So we need to make sure that our students and that we are prepared. One of the most fascinating trends, if you look at data during the period of, you know, starting basically in March 15th, all the way through to current times, is how our um, relationship with spending and saving has changed as a result of COVID. I'm sure that many of you on this uh, call experience this. I know personally, I was afraid. Um, you know, March 16th hit, I got an email that I could no longer travel. I started canceling meetings. I started writing down all the meetings that I couldn't have externally. And I really started to realize, I don't know if I will have a job in two months. You know, that's the, the, the God honest truth. You know, you're not sure what's gonna happen. I walked down uh, one afternoon to my wife and said, we need to tighten the belt. Um, and we need to really think about how we're spending and how we're saving in a world where in 10 months, we may be in a completely different economic situation. The, um, what we saw, and I'll show some more data points, but that the generation of students that you are teaching are going to grow up in a world um, where they might be thinking about saving and they might be thinking about money much more differently than you or I or any of the other folks that are interacting, that they've interacted with their life have thought about this. You know, I was in college during the 2008 economic crisis, um, but that strangely pales in comparison when you think about how much the world has changed as a result of this global pandemic. Our students need to be even more prepared for a job market and a financial market that's unclear. Um, I thought, and I'll send the links to Chandler and I'll send this to Chandler so that you all can take a look at this data. Um, but in March of this year, Bankrate um, did a survey uh, thinking about um, how consumer behaviors have, consumer and uh, saving behaviors had changed as a result of COVID. Um, so what you can see on this is the majority of folks cut spending as a result of COVID. 52% of Americans have inten had intentionally cut their spending as a result of COVID. I'm sure if you look at this graph, you can identify as part of that 52%. I know for me personally, I said I was concerned over the economy and I was concerned about, you know, the things that I had invested in in the stock market. I know that, you know, I have a retirement fund. Um, and while that is not something that I'm gonna dip into immediately, it is terrifying to look at your retirement fund and see it lose value at such a massive scale. Um, I'll say that you know, in a conversation having with friends, the reality of thinking about parents retiring, you know, that is real. Um, so spending definitely was changed as a result of this. So that brings me to a large point. Financial literacy matters. And I know that we all know this as folks that are every single day trying to communicate to our students and to our communities that we need to think about financial literacy. And it was fascinating to hear, um, you know, as one of you all shared about parents not being um, totally understanding of the need for personal finance in this period. Um, I would argue that now more than ever, it is important that we openly and honestly talk about personal finance at every single level, whether that's elementary, middle school, or high school. We really need students to start connecting the dots about what does it mean to really be a good steward of your money? I'll give you an example of why I think that matters. Um, it's the tale of two millennials. When COVID struck um, and when COVID changed um, the way that we thought about stock markets, millennials reacted in two dramatically different ways. One part of millennials um, added money to the market. They saw um, the stock market dip and they knew that they could buy into stocks at a lower cost and that they could ride out the instability in the market to eventually make more money um, 
they were attuned to that reality, that stock markets will change over time. And we've seen that just recently. The market has been very volatile in the last three months as stocks have you know, dipped in rows and dipped in rows. Um, there are many millennials who took advantage of that. What I found fascinating is that the millennial group was also the highest group of people that completely sold out of the stock market. Um, those were folks that were less risk averse um, and said, I wanna pull everything that I have invested into out of the stock market. The reality here is that neither of these two groups are right or wrong, but both of these two groups indicate to me people that have the ability to critically think about how they've engaged with the stock market. They're critically thinking about their investments. We need to make sure that every single student that we work with has this level of thought um, when they're faced with crisis, that they're able to say, I think the best decision that I can make now is to take my money out of the stock market, or the best decision that I can make now is to continue to invest in the market. So what does that bring us but a call to action? Um, this data is prior to COVID, but I still think it's relevant for the moment that we're in. Um, in 2018, uh, Charles Schwab uh, did their uh, Modern Wealth Index, which is a survey that they sent out to about a thousand homes. Um, only one in four homes indicated that they were financial planners, meaning that they thought intentionally and had a plan around their money. As you can see, 75% um, of planners had enough money to be able to pay their bills and to save each month even in the midst of a financial crisis. 65% of planners had the ability to have a fund for emergencies. Take that to today. If you got COVID, you may, if you are not in the planner camp, not have enough money to be able to fund the medical bills that are required for you to take care for yourself. What we need to think about is folks that are invested in financial education, invested in making sure students understand um, these financial skills is that we need to move from one fourth of folks being planners to four out of four folks being planners because 75% of students and 75% of folks just engaged nationally not having a financial plan is terrifying when you think about the long term implications for that um, as a society. The other interesting statistic that I found when I was thinking about the importance of this conversation and the importance of just this series that SE Economics is putting on is that it, from a, a National Financial Educators Council from 2017, of 18 to 24 year olds, 22.4% of them did not have anyone that they trusted to turn to, to for adv financial advice. Um, that's also terrifying as we think about what might have occurred for those 18 year olds that were turning 20 or 21 in the midst of COVID and didn't know who to turn to they might have been that group that had maybe never invested in the stock market and didn't have the access to be able to take advantage of the dip or the access to be able to just pull money out of the stock market to deal with emergencies. Um, so we need to make sure that we're moving the needle on these two fronts. We need students that are engaged in planning for their future and we need students that know who to turn to and have multiple sources to find information. So with that, to the Everify side, um, I'm so thankful to be able to share this information. And again, I'll say, if you, if you have any questions as you're going throughout, I have the chat box up right now. Um, I'm very good at being interrupted as a former seventh grade educator. So feel free to hit me with what you got as we go through. Um, but I'm excited to share with you about Everify. So for those of you that know us, um, you'll know that Everify is a K-12 digital learning company that builds resources focused on critical skills. We're gonna focus primarily on financial education today, but the next slide that I'll show you are all of the wheels of uh, critical skills that we think about. What makes Everify different is that we work with various public and private partners to fully underwrite the cost of our resources. So when you look at any of the resources that you see today, just know that the digital component of that resource the offline component of that resource, any of the trainings that we're doing in your district, any of our ongoing support is fully funded by a different public or private partner. So there's no cost to you as an educator, your district, your school, you as a teacher, your students, your families, they can all use Everfi through the funding that we receive from public and private partners. Um, 
I love my job. <laughs> I never need to ask anyone um, to fund our the work that we're doing, um, which is great. I get to really focus on the knowledge of how do we use this? How do we make this impactful for students? Uh, we focus mainly on uh, various uh, dimensions of wellness that you might think about that are important for students. We know financial wellness is incredibly important for students, but we also know that it's important for, important for students to think about their social and emotional wellness, their um, occupational wellness, their literacy, uh, their uh, educational wellness, excuse me, their cultural wellness, and then they're just true health and wellness. So we won't dig into any of these other pieces. Um, uh, we, we won't dig into any of these pieces, other pieces. We'll talk about financial education today. But again, if you touch various different pieces of the world, what I'm going to do is have Chandler send to you a catalog of all of our resources, and you can feel free to ask us questions about any of those. Last year in the state of South Carolina, um, we had 70,000 students actively using EverFi resources. Um, 362 schools participating in using any of our K-12 resources and over 900 teachers. Um, we're really excited by this. It indicates growth year over year in terms of the number of students using last year and also using in this period of time, regardless of COVID. Um, and as you'll see, you know, the vast majority of folks, and I know there are some EverFi users on this chat, um, they love our resources. So they're folks that will come back to us year over year and use our resources. One thing I'll note here um, is if you are a career and technical educator, EverFi High School Financial Literacy does have a stackable credential in the state of South Carolina. It is not a credential that impacts your college and career readiness score. I should just make that super clear, but it is a credential that your students can earn that goes on their transcript that builds towards workplace readiness for them. This is the season um, at EverFi where we do conversations with school district partners and we share the efficacy of our resources. Um, it's great for me to tell you that we had 70,000 students use our resources. Yahoo, that's awesome. Um, what's more important to me is that our students are actually learning um, when they're uh, using resources. Am I breaking up for everybody? Okay, all right, I just wanna make sure. Um, so our resources are actually moving the needle for students. In the 2019-2020 school year, over 18,000 students used our high school financial literacy resource across the state. Um, I'm going to show you what our high school financial literacy resource looks like as we move through our presentation. Um, but what we do within all of EverFi resources are have pre and post assessments where we gauge what students have learned as they've actually gone through our resource. So within the four lessons that are associated here, um, students saw significant learning gains as they went through our course. Take, for example, understanding credit and debt. The average pre-assessment score on credit and debt amongst all students in South Carolina was a 57% understanding. Um, when students left the course, they had an 83% understanding of credit and debt. So we know that we are actively moving the needle for students as they start to understand and go through our modules. More important than this, in my mind, we also see that students make behavioral changes as a result of taking our resources. If you look at the right-hand side of your screen, 70, and this is national data, just so you know, 76% of students that took EverFi, high school financial literacy, felt more prepared to make financial decisions in their lives. If we go back to what we talked about and the reality that we built at the beginning of this, being a part of that solution, moving students from knowledge to action is massively important for EverFi. We wanna make sure that we're working with y'all to build a more financially literate South Carolina and a more financially literate nation. Because we know that equipping students for that for tomorrow is so important for us to be able to, you know, navigate ourselves as a country and move forward. I'm happy to send y'all any of the nitty gritty data around uh, student usage for the state of South Carolina, or if you're a district administrator or work with your district administrator, I'm happy to send you this report. Um, so you can see this as well. Before we get into the meat and potatoes and I share with you what our resources look like, I just wanna make sure our funding model makes complete sense to, to everyone. Um, and this is a great time and I'll pause and answer any questions that you have. Um, but this is how our funding model works. Um, at the high school level, for the majority of South Carolina, our high school financial literacy resource is funded by either Truist, which is uh, formerly bb and or local bank partners. What that funding enables is that 
every single high school across the state through either Truist or their local bank partner has access to unlimited student licenses to our high school financial literacy resource. Use it with 10 students, use it with 100 students, use it with 1,000 students. Still the same, it's free. Um, it also means that you have a dedicated regional implementation specialist. I am one of those folks for the state of South Carolina, but we also have Jess Richter, um, who I'll share, who, whose contact information I'll share and follow up, who can answer questions that you have about how to actually use EverFi resources in your classroom. Um, that funding also enables scholarship opportunities across the state. So Truist specifically offers a $1,000 529 scholarship yearly. Um, so students that take the Financial Foundations course through Truist can apply for that scholarship. And then they have that 529 scholarship to be able to fund long-term plans for college or for other secondary, post-secondary education. Um, finally, um, as we just kind of saw, that funding also enables us to do pretty cool data analysis for districts and for the State Department of Education. Um, so we share that information that you just saw with districts quarterly and in a big report at the end of the school year. Um, we want to make sure that resources are not just being used, but they're actually impactful. Um, that's really important for us. So with that, I'm going to pause. I'm going to take a sip of my coffee. I'm going to answer any questions that you have before we dive into actual EverFi resources. And if not, that's OK. Cool. OK. So now the fun part. Um, we provide across the state of South Carolina 22 instructional resources. We're going to focus on just seven resources today, um, which are financial education resources from elementary school through high school. Um, I will say that two of those resources will not be released until the end of August, so we'll just kind of talk broadly about them. But one of the resources, if you're an elementary school person um, who I see two good questions. I'm going to answer them in a second. If you're an elementary school person who's previously used Vault, we just relaunched Vault. Um, so that's a new course that just came out yesterday, which is super exciting. So you all are the first educators in South Carolina that are going to see that new course because I'm going to show it to you today. Um, two things later, yes, I will send the link through Chandler um, for y'all to register. Um, I can also just very quickly type it into the chat um, and you'll see it later in the presentation. And then yes, our resources are funded for any type of school in the state. So that is a public school, a private school, a public charter school, a private charter school, a parochial school, any school that works with K-12 students, you are funded. Um, alternative schools, um, we, you know, we work with the Department of Juvenile Justice in the state as well. So we really just wanna make sure that any student that needs our resources has access to our resources. So great question, no. Okay. So um, what's kind of fun is that this slide needs to be updated because we now actually offer uh, three more resources as part of this. Um, we offer Vault um, Understanding Money at the elementary school, homeschool associations also included. Yes, sorry, I should have said that. We actually have an account that's just South Carolina Homeschool where you can set yourself up throughout the state. Um, we offer Vault Understanding Money at the elementary school level, Future Smart at the middle school level, EverFi financial literacy at the high school level, marketplaces at the high school level. We're going to dive into Vault and to EverFi financial literacy. I'm actually going to demo those resources for you so you can see what they look like. Um, and I will talk through all of the other resources. But what we really try to do with our resources is build a pipeline from elementary school through high school where you can feel supported with having something that you know, fits into your curricular needs at any grade level. Um, that's really the hope here is that you can find an EverFi resource that fits into any sort of course that you're teaching that touches financial literacy. So with that, I'll dive into our new Vault course. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share with you what our resources look like. Um, so I'm going to come out of my screen sharing and I'm going to share a different screen. Um, but just to give you a brief overview, EverFi resources are digital simulations that have supplementary offline lesson plans that allow the course to be part digital, part offline for students. Um, particularly as you're thinking about going back to the classroom um, in whatever shape or form that takes next year, EverFi resources fit really great into a flipped cl classroom model where you're having students do part of the course at home and then you're utilizing our resources or any of your own created lesson plans to really bring that information home for students. 
Vault is our elementary school resource that we do see it used sometimes in sixth grade to help supplement and differentiate. Um, that consists of five lessons, each about 15 minutes long. We've really focused Vault on having students think about both financial literacy, but also decision making as they kind of work through financial literacy. So we've really situated this in elementary school to be focused on how am I changing my habits or behaviors around money as I think about the skills that I need to build with money. So financial decision making lesson number one, this is really having students make uh, choices about what's great to spend money on and what's not great to send, spend money on. So they're really working on decision making skills here. Budgeting and spending. So this is about setting goals, you know, thinking about goal setting for short and long term. Um, income and careers, so having an interest um, and thinking about that interest long term and how they approach it. Credit and borrowing, um, so understanding what it means to borrow something from a financial institution. So that students have an expanded definition of this idea that if they borrow something, they need to give it back. Um, so really having them, even at the elementary school level, understand what the positive and negative consequences of borrowing are. And finally, future planning. So if I'm a student, how do I start making decisions now so I can positively impact my future? Um, with that, give me one second. I'm gonna come back and share my screen. That, click the wrong button, Chandler. Now I got it. All right. Thanks y'all for bearing with me. All right, so you are the first group. This is the new, thank you Chandler. This is the new Vault Understanding Money um, for elementary school. So as a note, if you have previously used Vault in your classroom, um, the old Vault will no longer be available. It should be gone as of yesterday and you should have the new Vault automatically added. Um, so really all that happened is we just transitioned you from the old vault to the new vault. Um, the new vault, as I shared, is broken into five lessons. Um, what I've done here is I've skipped a little bit um, and I've moved us forward um, to where we're just looking at the lessons. Um, but what I would share is that what we've changed is that at the beginning, students are introduced to this idea that they've traveled into a different universe. Um, so they're thinking about money um, in its broadest sense. So this is, you know, really situated for students to have a lot of fun as they go through this. Um, so in our first lesson, um, we're looking at financial decision making. And just like any of our resources, if you've used our resources, or if this is the first time you're seeing our resources, we start with a five question pre-assessment that asks students to actively think about what they know um, about uh, financial decision making. So here they're thinking about, you know, what does this mean? And I'll say I'm randomly answering, um, but you as an educator will see this score um, as students go out. Also, this is the demo mode within the teacher account. So we won't see a score here, but just know your students will see a score when they take this quiz. So they'll know how they did in the pre-assessment. Once they've done that, you'll see visually, um, and particularly if you know what the old vault looks like, this is thrilling to me. Um, the new vault, um, you'll see visually, you know, it's a group of students and what they're going to do, they've landed in a portal in a different land. And now they're going to start thinking about um, how they're going to make decisions within that land. Um, so what you can't hear right now um, is that um, there is active uh, reading happening to students as they're going through this. So this is read aloud to students. And then I will share that vault understanding money is also translatable fully to Spanish. So it's also a, a, a resource that can be used by your primarily Spanish speaking students. Um, so they're going through, they're getting um, into the town, and now they're gonna start looking at various items and talking to various townsfolks, and they're gonna start learning about the problems that they're having. So, Now they're going to start talking to different folks. And they're going to understand various financial terms. Um, 
Yes, that it is read aloud. Sorry, I know we can't hear it right now, but it is read aloud, just so you folks know. Um, but you can see here, you know, we're starting to get into um, uh, the actual like financial tool pieces. So we're in this new world, folks. Um, folks don't have um, that. Folks have limited means here. Um, so as they're kind of going through this, they're understanding what that means for limited means. Um, and they are going to learn about that definition and learn about what that means in the context of the society. So now they're putting that into practice. They've learned about limited means and now they need to figure out, okay, what does this person actually need if they only have so much money or so many means? So they might not need a bicycle. So we're going to choose that and we're going to get a little bit of feedback. So they didn't pick right. It's going to give them some feedback. So now they're going to go through this. So the other thing that you'll see is that this course is now dynamic. It's not a single linear path for students. So if students had picked the right answer, it would bring them in a slightly different path, um, just so that folks know that. Um, I'm going to pause here. I'm going to answer. I just saw one question that I, I love. I think, yes, this does have data that you can use for IEP goals. So basically, and we won't get through this as we're clicking through, but let's say that I've set an IEP goal around um, students navigating the idea of needs versus wants, students demonstrating that they understand needs versus wants. Once they finish this lesson, um, they have a 10 question post assessment that does have directly aligned questions to that idea of needs versus wants. And then you as an educator have that information within your teacher dashboard that you can use as a piece of um, your IEP conversation. What I will say is just obviously this is a piece of a data point. This is not going to be your end all be all for IEP goals. Um, but I have seen it used for that. Um, the other thing that I've seen it used for just in this idea of accountability, um, I've had many school counselors use this as part of their portfolio as they're demonstrating that they've mastered um, specific uh, ASCA and uh, school counseling model standards um, with their students. So that's another way, if you're a school counselor that's on this call, you can lever leverage that data in your portfolio, uh, perhaps if you're um, trying to get licensure as an example. Um, so with that, I'm going to pause here and I'm going to keep moving um, so y'all can see some other resources. Um, the other resource that I'll just show very quickly is for our high school educators um, who are on the call. Um, you'll immediately set, see that we've moved into uh, a different visual layout um, for our students, though we have really tried to make our, our resources in recent years much more visually appealing and much more simulation based for students. Um, so where it used to be a lot of get and sit and get, we're now really having students actively engaged in the learning process. Everby High School Financial Literacy is seven lessons. Um, each of the lessons in this course, about 20 to 25 minutes long. Um, so we'll click right into Banking Basics really quickly. In this module, you will... So in this course, um, banking, the students start by doing a short profile um, around understanding banking, uh, excuse me, understanding how they think about banking. So again, going back to this idea of uh, students really starting to be active thinkers about their money. So again, a five question pre-assessment. How we feel about. And they're gonna start by doing a conversation about what type of money manager they are. So they're gonna answer these questions. And then what's gonna populate for them is a profile about how they think Whether about money. Just in this one, you can hear, uh, the other one was muted, but you can hear the read aloud that we're happening, that's happening in this course, um, just so you can kind of visualize that for Vault as well. I will say high school financial literacy also entirely translatable to Spanish. Um, so now we do have at least one resource at elementary, middle, and high school um, that is entirely translatable to Spanish for your Spanish speaking students at those grade levels as well. But if you're attuned to the old high school financial literacy, uh, what you'll immediately see in the new high school financial literacy is that we've moved away from a video starting off the lesson to really situationally um, having students think about the problem they're trying to solve. So I'm starting to discuss these as simulations, right? You're having students really simulate what this world would look like for them as they're going through these decisions. So in this, you're Martin Suarez. He just got his first job. 
Um, and Martin needs to figure out what he's going to do with his paycheck um, now that he's gotten his first job. So I'm sure all of us can relate to this uh, when we got our first paycheck and maybe we didn't have a bank account set up and we were like, what the heck are we going to do with this? Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to give Martin some guidance. You want him to go to a trusted source. And then we're actually going to work with Martin to review, source, to review these different uh, trusted sources. This is a great opportunity for blending learning in your classroom. Again, you might have students, uh, particularly in the uh, upper grade levels, who may not immediately be back in their school. They may need to have some virtual simulations that they're doing at home. And then when you do get them in class, they can have this as a base that you can then do a more hands-on activity with them, where they're maybe researching with you, or they're maybe doing a debate about different sorts of financial institutions. Um, but really leveraging this as a pre-learning piece for students as they're going into the classroom. Which financial institution so do you think So we've researched and now we're going to choose the financial institution. Select an option below. Okay. So just for the sake of time, I know we have about 20 minutes left. I'm going to pop back into the presentation. And I think everyone should still be able to see uh, my screen, which is great. Um, so we've covered two of our resources. Um, the two good questions. So is the, yes. So the Spanish translation is a toggle switch. So when students log in, they click their name and they translate it to Spanish. Um, and that will change Spanish for everything, including our platform and the course. Um, so that's, yes, it's a toggle switch for students. So we didn't look at Future Smart, but if you're a middle school level educator, Future Smart is our middle school financial education and career readiness resource. It's seven lessons focused on very similar topics to what we saw in Vault and what we saw in high school. Um, so understanding financial values, setting goals, savings versus, and investing, and risk and return. So again, thinking about this, really setting a cadence for students as they're working through and understanding financial education. Another resource that we've seen used in middle school is our venture resource. This is a really exciting resource. Um, has students design their own food truck? Um, so it really is an intersection of them about understanding personal finance and understanding business finance. So this is great for your students that want to take their learning to the next level and want to think about an entrepreneurial path. Um, and this is great as students uh, also think about the marketplace and understand how companies get funded as they're maybe trying to launch their own company. This is four lessons long, takes about an hour for students to complete. Everify High School Financial Literacy, we saw. Um, it's a great question. So it, it does have teacher resources that help students guide. So we'll get to that in a minute. Um, high School Financial Literacy, we saw. Marketplaces, we did not see. Marketplaces is another high school resource. Five lessons focused on students really understanding the financial markets. So we think that this resource is going to be incredibly important for students next year as they really want to understand how to interact with marketplaces. Um, what's great is that this resource is a uh, short, um, is a short um, addition. So it is only an hour long for students. So this is something that works well with any of the other things that you might be doing around economics. So I know that SE Economics has a robust um, uh, market, uh, stock market game. Um, so this could be like pre-learning for students an hour beforehand. It's not a very involved course for them. So a good supplemental piece for them, gives them some pre-learning. Two that are really exciting, um, that are brand new for Everify. So my initial, uh, <laughs> Uh, name for the session was what the Zelle, um, because many of you may be using Zelle or other Venmo based payment apps. Um, and we're actually launching a brand new program that talks to students about responsible banking in the new digital world. Um, I uh, pay have paid rent through Venmo before. Um, your students are going to go into a world um, where they're um, having to really think about um, how to engage in a digital world. So this is really about them understanding fraud protection, understanding what it means to have digital payments um, and what it means to actually be a part of a new digital world. Uh, the other exciting course that we're launching, and I know someone said there's a college savings or career unit they're thinking about. We are building a course that is entirely about, um, entirely about financing higher education. Um, so this is about 
really understanding what a higher ed loan means and then under, understanding the value of paying back that loan timely. So while the content is focused on higher education, I will say I've talked about this as understanding consumer debt. Um, because what students are really understanding is the value of the debt that they're taking on to fund their education and then generally understanding the value of debt and the importance of leveraging debt to make changes in one's life. So really excited about this course as well. Both of those courses, you should know, come out in late August, beginning of September. So we're excited for those resources to launch. Okay, before we jump in, and I saw a couple of questions. Um, this is typically how we see EverFi resources used, um, using a flipped classroom model. So we've discussed this where they're doing this resource before they come to your classroom. We think flipped classroom is gonna be wildly important this school year as you think about how your world is kind of changing for students. I need you to think of creative ways for them to be prepared to come into your class. Um, we've also seen this used as a capstone project. So at the end of a unit, you may have students do high school financial education as a way to review all their standards. Um, and then just generally used as part of guided practice. So if you're in a more traditional classroom setting, you've maybe done your lecture. Now students are doing this as an activity or they're doing this as their exit ticket. All right, we've talked about all of this. Um, I'm gonna move on, keep going. And then I just think these pieces are important. 65% um, of students feel that they can make, they have, the, students love our resources. I'll just kind of work through this quickly. I wanna get into, the, into actually getting folks signed on. Um, but students and teachers love our resources. 93% you know, of the teachers that use our resources would, would say that they'd use these resources again um, with, their, with their students. We're really, really proud of that. Um, and we hope that, especially for folks that have been with us for a while, seeing these changes is an indication to you that we're really committed to, to being with you for the long term. All right, so we have a little over 10 minutes left. We have 13 minutes left. So we're gonna get into the access of EverFi piece. Um, I will say a couple of questions came through. I think Vault can absolutely be used at third grade. Um, we've seen it used at third grade successfully before, and I think we can, we'll, you'll see it used at third grade again. We're about to get into um, the creation of an app, like a teacher account where you can navigate um, independently so you can review all the resources. Um, and then I will say someone brought up the idea, two people brought up uh, parents. Um, we do have parent facing resources that uh, work together with our content. Um, so specifically, we offer in the state of South Carolina an adult education program that's funded by Truist. So if you're a parent in elementary school, as an example, you can have your students do vault in your classroom, and then you can send parents home the link to go through an adult financial education program. So we really do want this to start conversations at home as well. We want students to be talking to their parents about financial education. So I love that. Okay, I will also say, this is the hardest part of the presentation is getting folks started virtually. Um, so I am gonna do my darndest to make sure that everything is super duper clear. But I wanna just again stress, if you have any questions, please write them down. I will share my contact information at the end and you can email, call, text, whatever, we'll get you situated. Um, okay, first confusing slide. Um, there are two methods of access for EverFi in South Carolina. Um, high school, excuse me, uh, we either are used via our website or we are used via Clever. Um, Clever is a single sign-on portal and that means that we have a relationship with your school district and you access us via your school district rather than via EverFi's direct site. So on this very busy slide, if you are a teacher in any of these school districts, you either have access to EverFi now via Clever, or you will access EverFi via Clever next year. So what that means is that you'll find Clever and you'll find the EverFi application and you will um, go to EverFi. What is great is that I am going to type in right now um, the site, uh, I'm gonna type in the site for EverFi into the chat. Regardless of whether you are in a clever district or if you are not in a clever district, you will both go to this site. 
Um, Carol, that's a great question. We do integrate with Launchpad. Um, so if you are in Oconee um, or if you are in Lexington School District 1, we are actually on your Launchpad. Um, so you will go to your Launchpad and the Everify app should be there. Um, if you are in Greenville, we are in, um, if you are in Greenville, we are in your backpack. Um, if you are not listed here, um, then we have not yet integrated with your district via Clever. So you'll just create uh, your account the traditional way. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to do the traditional way first, and then I will come back to Clever. So again, if you are, if you are in this call and your district is listed here, please ignore me for about two minutes and then I'll come back to this. Okay. I'm going to move and do this a little bit faster. Okay. If you are in a non-clever district, you can either go to the chat link that I just put in, which is www.everfy.net, or you can go to everfy.com forward slash new teacher. And what you'll do there is you'll create your account, um, just kind of the same way you'd do any sort of online account. You'll find your, our state of South Carolina, um, and then you'll find your school. I will note, we sometimes have named schools incorrectly. So if you can't find your school at first look, it does not mean it does not exist. It does not mean you don't have access. It might just mean we're missing a period somewhere. Um, like if you're WH white or something, we might've put W no period H period white. Um, but everyone who is not in a clever district should be able to go to everfi.com forward slash new teacher. Again, this is definitely the piece that is hardest to do virtually. Typically, if I'm in person, I'll actually split the room into clever enabled folks and non clever enabled folks, and then we'll do kind of support for each group of folks. So I appreciate y'all's patience and we'll make sure that everyone gets this PowerPoint and you can, you know, ask me any questions that you have. Once you've found uh, your state and your school, you'll create your profile. I'm not. I'm not sure about those last few questions. Um, I'll loop back to it. But if you're creating your account, um, you'll create your first name, your last name, um, and then you'll enter your email address and you'll create a password. Ah, uh, let's search let's, let's switch five next year. We're we're we just integrated last week. We're very excited. Um so you'll just select one course to start. And then once you've done this, you'll click I agree to terms of service. You're welcome to read terms of service. I think obviously we live in a digital world and it's important to, you know, I don't want to gloss over this. We do not store any student data, um, just really important for y'all to know. Um, we ask students to verify if they're over or under the age of 13 when they sign up for EverFi for COPPA regulations, but we do not actually store their date of birth. We just mark whether they're over or under the age of 13. Um, and that's actually the only piece of data that we store is just whether students are over or under the age of 13 for federal, federal regulations but you can read terms of service. You're welcome to ask, ask me any questions about that um, privacy piece as well. For LexRidge 5, I believe we are launching in August, so that y'all know. So once you've done that, but for LexRidge 5, I should say, create your account through the everfi.com forward slash new teacher site. And once we're clever integrated, We'll, we'll kind of merge your two accounts. So you can set up your Everfy account normally right now. Um, and then once we connect, we'll, we'll merge. It's a great question about Richland One. Um, if you're, I'll go back to the Clever site, if the Clever page, if your district is not listed, it's actually fairly easy for us to integrate with a district and districts really love to see teachers that want us to be Clever integrated then we can kind of speed that process along. Um, so if you want that for your district, 
if you ask the right person or if you bring it to me, I can ask my district contacts and, and we can work on that. Um, but again, we have five minutes left. So I'm gonna pause here and I'm just gonna show you two other things. Um, so as soon as you've created your account, um, you can add additional courses by clicking add course. So if you see ignition and ever find new, if you go to add course, and I'll actually come out of this and show on my actual Everfi page. It's everfi.net. So when I'm on the Everfi dashboard, it's a great question. Um, I can click view course. I can add additional courses by going to add course. I realized mid presentation that we do actually have an eighth resource for financial education that I did not talk about, which is Keys to Your Future. And someone asked a great question about that. Keys to Your Future does talk about college and career readiness and does talk about financing higher education, but we will also be launching another resource that is separate, that's about financing higher education. So we'll really have two resources for financing higher education next year. So we have eight financial education resources. The way that students access Everfi um, is similar to Google Classroom, where you create a code and then give students a code to get started. And you can see that process here. You click create a class, generate a class code. Okay. So, we're at the end. Um, I'm going to put my contact information up. Sorry that the last part of this was a little bit jumbled, um, but I wanted to make sure I got through all the content first and then got to this part. Um, the website is everfi.net. And if you are clever enabled or not clever enabled, you can log in here. Um, what I will do is I will send to Chandler following this conversation immediately. Um, the information that you all need um, to get started with Everfi. Please, please, please do not hesitate with questions this week. Um, do not hesitate to reach out with any questions to me individually. Um, you can create your account and look at any of the resources by clicking on view course when you're in there. Um, and then if you have specific questions for me, I am going to put up this link and I'm gonna put this in the chat too. You can send to me questions if you have them like immediately. But again, I am going to send everything to Chandler following this right now um, so that you can ask me any questions. And Peter, thank you so much. And I'll make sure that you guys all get his contact information in my follow-up email as well um, so that you'll have a place to, to, to direct your questions toward him. Thank you so much. This has been fantastic. I know it is, we need like two hours for this session. It's such a good session. Um, so hopefully, Peter, you'll be welcome to come back um, and maybe do the, the next level with everyone, get everybody on. Um, and we'll figure out some ways to kind of incorporate you. I am dropping the Google form for evaluations for SE Economics um, into the chat box. So if you guys will take a few minutes um, to fill that out, I know that by this point, you guys can do that like clockwork. Um, but again, this is just to register that you are here. Um, get some feedback on um, the presentation and then also it gives you your credit for attending today's session. So thank you so much. I think this was fantastic. I use Everfi when I was teaching. It has changed dramatically <laughs> in the last couple of years, which I think is so cool to see. Um, I, I think I got as much out of this, you know, as you guys did just knowing, you know, that the fact that Vault is upgraded, that even you know, the Everfi financial literacy that I used in the high school is very different than what you guys are offering now. And I, I think you guys have done some amazing advances. Um, I really think this is going to be super useful um, for the teachers who are on this call and just everyone. So I will definitely be sharing out this information. Again, thank you so much um, for everyone in attendance. As soon as you fill out the Google form, you are good to go. So thank you so much for being here. I'll hang out for a little while. Peter, if you have time, you're welcome to yes. hang out. Um, I'm going to take back over reclaiming my host um, just so that you can yeah. <laughs> leave whenever you please. Perfect. Um, but I will hang out, answer questions. Um, if you guys have any, um, we'll be here. But again, fill out the evaluation and you're good to go. Thank you so much for spending your morning with us.
Yeah. And just the last thing I'll share is if your school district would like any specific professional development from EverFi, we are happy to do that at the beginning of the school year. Um, so please feel free to reach out with those requests. But otherwise, thank you all for having me. This is really great. Yes, Peter. Thank you so much for, for coming on with us this morning. This was great. Awesome.